All right, everyone, now we have to give a bit of a belated congratulations to the nation of India. Chandrayaan-3 has landed on the lunar south pole. Not long before, Russia tried to land a rover there. They're basically, it was a competition. Nobody's ever landed in that zone before, and India now the fourth nation to land a lunar rover at all, and the first to land on the uh, South Pole there, They're beating out the Russians. Their uh, rover, their Luna 25, uh, unfortunately went into a tailspin and uh, appears to have crashed. Now we've got to wait and see whether the rover that's in this uh, capsule uh, performs well, um, how it functions. It looks like it was fairly well made. Uh, you got to realize as time goes on, the design of rovers and landers and things like that, while you still have the same logistic issues with the difficulty of a moonshot, at least if you make the moonshot, things are, are more powerful, they're more sophisticated in general, imaging gets better. Like the pictures that you can take on the moon or even Mars now, I mean, things from the 70s pale in comparison now, don't they? Um, back then, it's really grainy. There's not a whole lot going on. Now it's like, you know, in 8K, basically. And uh, and so that's good. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to test for. They're probably drilling for uh, ice more than anything else. Uh, the mission ramifications, I haven't read through that. But uh, I think it's important, especially as India rises up as a world power, it would have been humiliating if, if the rover had failed. The fact that it didn't fail, that they're now the only the fourth nation in the whole world with what you consider a beefy space program, uh, like North Korea is still trying to figure out how to launch satellites into Earth's uh, low orbit. So <laughs> they're still having problems with that for uh, surveillance purposes. And it failed the other day. Meanwhile, India manages to get it uh, fairly easily and uh, apparently in a perfect landing. So hopefully that increases science. Uh, sometimes people get all factional and they're like, well, they're like they'll cheer the fact that the Russian lander didn't work and ha ha ha, you know, Vatnik lost, ha ha, space program is a joke. Yeah, but you know, you just lost potentially a horde of scientific knowledge. As someone who's inclined towards science, I was the kid with the microscopes and stuff, especially in elementary school. I don't know, I, I always want to see scientific knowledge expanded because it's fascinating to me. I used to be even more into it than now. Now, biology may be my forte, but yeah, uh, astronomy is pretty cool. I mean, think about it. Uh, the moon is separated by, from the Earth by an extremely large distance. And then you're also talking about Mars rovers and satellites we just fire out into deep space as well. Some of them are now in literal deep space. Uh, it's not easy to fire at the moon and get something to land on it without completely destroying it. Now, of course, if you just railgun off a large object, yeah, you can fire, take pot shots at the moon for what it's worth. Make little craters, study, study the impact of a perfect 500-pound uh, iron sphere when it hits the moon at however many miles per second or something like that. Uh, but actually landing a rover there, that's more difficult. Imagine uh, the United States is planning to put people on the moon again. There's, of course, a chance that that fails. If it fails, you know, if, if it goes... Uh, Apollo mode and burns up in the atmosphere or something like that, there will be people in the world who will celebrate the loss as though, yes, uh, that huge amount of human endeavor involving extremely rigorously trained scientists, some of the best in the industry, getting burned uh, to a crisp in, in Earth's atmosphere or crash landing on the moon. Imagine if you survive and you're literally you become the first person to keel on the moon. Uh, that would suck. Uh, I, I just think that that's a little bit ghastly. So congratulations to the na uh, nation of India. I'm uh, eagerly awaiting seeing more images and uh, all sorts of scientific cool shit because it is cool shit. That's just the long and short of it. Hopefully Russia manages to get their next lunar uh, lander uh, up aboard and then get it uh, safely landed on the moon. And then hopefully when the, the United States, I think the next uh, uh, is it the Artemis mission, I think, is going to orbit the moon. And that'll be manned, the next one. And then they're going to try to land people on it. Uh, not a rover, but a, an actual capsule, a returnable capsule uh, with human beings, live human beings aboard. Should be some sort of joint function. You know, right now we could really use a little bit more east-west diplomacy. Maybe all of the major space nations should donate an astronaut and get a really god-awfully gigantic multi-rocket built like by Tesla or something going. Or, you know, you could have it built in multiple countries or from multiple components from different countries and have like a togetherness capsule or something. See, that's the kind of diversity, uh, diversity and inclusion we need because we can hopefully throttle back on the world war mongering uh, as opposed to the wokeness that's being pushed instead. Used to be international cooperation was considered far more important. You know, people were actually 
uh, intelligent enough to, to worry about the possibility of another world war, which possibly goes nuclear. Now they're very flippant about it. Now it's like, ah, oh, pl- press the button. Ha ha, it doesn't matter. You're only killing a bunch of Americans. You're only killing a bunch of Indians and stupid shit like that. Well, congrats to India. Your lunar rover is now deployed. That's about all. Peace out.